But right now we're going down to Houston, Texas to talk with Houston Dynamo, Kofi Sir, Cody Kofi. Welcome to Red Card, my friend. Hey, thanks for having me. Pleasure to have you on, Kofi. Let's talk about that big win over Chivas USA, a lopsided win. Boy, oh boy, you guys had everything going offensively. How did that game come all apart for you guys in the positive way? Yeah, it was huge. I think, uh, you know, with uh, kind of our formation getting back, you know, with Boney out wide and, and Brad in the lineup, I think it helped uh, helped us uh, create a lot of things and our side backs getting forward and, and our forwards are finishing. So I think we we're firing off fronts uh, on, the, on the day. So hopefully we can kind of maintain that form uh, in these next series of games. It's got to be solid, Kofi, to play with a guy in behind you in Tally Hall, who I consider one of the best in MLS, if not one of the best in the world. And then you got Corey Ash, who just does his job game in and game out, and he's not flashy, but he's a warrior. How great is it to have those guys right beside you? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. You know, I've been with Tally and Corey now for about four years, and, you know, we've, uh, we've gone through a lot of games, a lot of matches together. Uh, Eastern Conference final matches, MLS Cup final matches, you know, and, and a lot of CONCACAF, different things like that. And, and like you said, you mentioned it, you know, Corey's one of those guys that he's going to come in day in, day out and give his best and make sure he's a fighter on the pitch. And, and Tally's come up huge for us time and time again. So knowing that those guys are, are next to you on the pitch is, is always a great thing going into a match. A well-coached team once again this year by a head coach, Dominic Kinnear. No surprise there. You hardly ever see, or see Coach Kinnear get excited or upset on the sidelines. Everything is done through the players focused and players for, for, for most. How great is that, Kofi, to have a coach like Dominic just let you guys do what you're told uh, during training and let it all out there on game time? Yeah, you know, Dom, Dom's, uh, he, he knows he knows how to win. You know, he's had a lot of success in the league, and you can tell by, by his record and, 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 and our, uh, our position that we've been in over the past few years. So it's great knowing that and knowing that he knows what's, you know, he knows the teams, he knows how to organize our team and, and get us ready and, and, and fit for, for the season. Kofi, Will Bruin, to me, is one of the best players in MLS in his position. What a, a wonderful target he is alongside Boniac Garcia, making him uh, the plays needed. And then you've got also uh, Gilles Barnes there who finishes up quite a bit. How great is it to know that once you guys do your part at the back end, up front, there's guys that are going to put it away? It's helpful. It's, it's definitely helpful because you know, you know, you know, going to the game, if you can hold the zero that you got some time to play at the top back and uh, that can produce for you. So as long as those guys are firing, as long as they're holding zeros, then you know those two, uh, those two together equal uh, some some good, win good wins and matches. Kofi, this year it looks like to me it's the most uh, even MLS uh, you know season that I've seen early on. You, you know, Sporting Kansas City defending champs. They've had some bumps at the beginning as well, but then you see Montreal falling off uh, early on, uh, and you see TFC with all the money they've poured in there with Jermaine Defoe, Michael Bradley struggling the last couple games. And then you see San Jose play the way they have. It looks like this year is there for the taking for anyone. Yeah, it is, man. It is, and, and, and to be honest, with you, it's even, it gets even crazier when you get closer to playoffs because right now there's a lot of disparity in terms of the points. But when you get even closer to playoffs, you can have a team that's been on fire all league or all you know all season, and they come across the opponent that's just getting hot, and all of a sudden you know you have an upset. So the playoffs system, even even that in of itself makes it even more kind of crazy. I mean, to me, it's great to see FC Dallas uh, having a strong season as well. That's always great for you guys to play FC Dallas and them playing strong. But to me, I've always said it, Kobe, that Pacific Northwest, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver is deadly to travel to because their fans are outstanding and their teams are really well stocked this season as well. 100%, 100%. I mean... You look at Seattle, Portland, I mean, if you, if you look at the fan base, like you mentioned, Vancouver, I mean, the fan base there is fantastic, you know, day in, day out. They're packed, you know, and, and the atmosphere and, and all those arenas is great. And, you know, they have a lot of quality on their team, and you can see it this year. And, and what they're going to, I think they're going to continue to produce throughout the year if, if some of the teams start off slow. And it, and it makes for a great atmosphere, like I mentioned, and uh, it's uh, those, those three venues, you know, they're, they're great places to play. Kofi, how great is it to see former players that have gone on to success in MLS like Pablo Mastriani have great success early on with the Rapids? I'll never forget here in the final in Toronto, uh, Pablo giving me a hug as we're doing an interview, how the tears flow down, how happy he was to win a championship. And now he's transferred that love, that passion, that knowledge to being the head coach of the Rapids. Is it great to see former players, as we're going to see here tomorrow night as well, Carl Robinson, uh, giving back and, and becoming head coaches with prospective clubs yeah 100 percent. because the 
they can relate even more to the players, you know? They've been through it. You know, like you said, Pablo's won a championship. He's been through it. He's played in international matches. So when you when you when he's coaching, when he's bringing up players that are starting to have those type of experiences, he can relate and he can better explain or interpret and help them, the player understand, develop, you know, uh, um, his his craft. So it's it's always a plus. It's always a positive when you when you have uh, you know coaches that have played before and then now are back in the system, you know, in a different role. Kofi, I said this and I'm going to stick to it. When the draw took place for the World Cup, I said that I truly believe the USA will get out of the group of death. Jurgen Klinsmann and his staff have done a tremendous amount of work. I believe in these young players that the USA has produced. Josie Altador, Dempsey, Michael Bradley, on and on. How do you see the USA doing uh, this year at the World Cup? You know, the, the, it's one of those where you just you never know. I mean, it's, it's a it's a it's a really tough group, so it's hard to say. Okay, this this team's gonna get out for sure. This team's not gonna get out for sure. I mean, I think it's gonna come down to on the day, you know, who shows up to play. Like you said, you we have a lot of talent. You know, we have a lot of talent um, from Dempsey to Josie. You know, throughout the team that can produce and that can score goals, and that they've done it time and time again. And if they can, if they're on, if on the day, you know. We're producing, then, then we're gonna we're gonna be able to, to, to carry some results. So it's huh. all just gonna be it's, it's gonna be a, a fantastic uh, World Cup. You know, I mean, every team in the World Cup, you know, even are, are, are it's just the, the the level is just so close now, and there's so many teams that are producing quality players and quality football. So it's gonna be an exciting time and. and a, and, and a great matches to watch. Kofi, you talk about quality players, and, and you look at MLS the way it's grown in leaps and bounds. Players now from overseas, Kofi, want to come here. We see the Red Bulls with Henri and Cahill. We see TFC with Jermaine Defoe, Michael Bradley. We saw with Beckham, Dempsey with the Sounders. I mean, I could go on and on. I get nonstop calls from Italy of agents asking me about the league, and I tell them it is a league that's growing. It is a league that means business. How do you as a player feel today in 2014, playing in a league now that is the focus of players of world-class caliber wanting to come over to play in your league? Yeah, it's fantastic because you get you get that uh, that exposure. You know, it's not it's not every day where you get to play against you know the Henrys, um, like you mentioned, Dempsey's and these type of quality players. So when you get to, when you get that exposure, you know, especially at a young age for guys that are that are coming up, let's say you know rookie this year. Imagine a rookie playing against. You know, Henry, a guy that he's watched, <laughs> or you know, he used to watch. You know, on the television, it's uh, you know, it's something that you can't you can't really quite describe because it's it's uh, like I said, it's an amazing opportunity and exposure. Kofi, there's a lot of young uh, boys out there that would love to live the dream you're living today, playing professional soccer, getting paid, traveling to some of the best hotels, eating in some of the best restaurants. But I'm pretty sure the journey to get where you were at. Uh, is is nothing short of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears that you left out there. But I'm sure there was a couple coaches that helped you along the way at the youth level, a mer maybe an influential parent or a relative. Who helped you get to the point that you're at today that you look back and say, thank God that these people helped me? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, I, I won't even hesitate. My mom, my family, you know, that, for me, that, that's, that's the first, you know. Like, they've always been there for me, and they've always supported me, and they've always... <laughs> You know, kept kept things positive when things weren't going as well, and, and when things were going well, they kept me level. And, and and for that, you know, you have to be grateful. And like you mentioned, you know, as you move up and in any sport, you know, you're gonna have to decide. Hard work is that that's the standard. You know, <laughs> you want to be a pro. Hard work's the standard. And then, you know, hopefully, um, through through you know, whether it be you know God's grace, you you meet the right people and you get you know have certain connections or the right people see you. You just never know in sports. And then you you put you get yourself in a good situation where you can perform and. And do what you do best. Well, Kofi, what do you want to say to the young men that are, you know, in their late teens or possibly have an opportunity and are gifted with wonderful talent to play pro soccer, where some of them today, let's be honest, think that everything is going to be handed to them. The six-figure contract, uh, all, all that comes with it, the fame, the glory. What do you want to say to them to make sure that they understand to not get trapped in that illusion of all grandeur and no hard work? Yeah, I mean, I would just say to stay humble, to understand that humility is part of the business to keep your head down and keep working hard. And as we close it out, Kofi, what do you want to say to those young players that maybe not be getting the experience or, you know, the, the, the great feedback from their youth coaches and, and they're not playing maybe in a game that they would love to start or maybe there's a tournament or a big time uh, situation coming up with the team that they are not given the responsibility to take a free kick. How do you want to get them to really think about the big picture and positiveness about themselves and not worry about what that coach believes in them right now? 
Yeah, they just they have to stay focused. You know, they need, they they gotta look long term. They gotta look further down the road and believe in themselves and believe in their ability. And if they can do that, they can stay focused on 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 their true goal. Then they'll be able to to showcase their talent. You know. And as we close it out, Kofi, what do you want to say to those young coaches out there that are teaching these young uh, boys the game that we love so much about making them understand that, hey, it's not the World Cup. It's not about winning all those $2 medals and $2 trophies. It's about developing a young player. What do you want to say to them to make them understand that, hey, it's not all about that? I would, I would hope and I would urge, you know, if you, if they, if for them to just look around the world and see, you know, quality of players that have been able to be seduced because of the focus and development and not necessarily focus on the results. And and by developing and truly, you know, nurturing and creating players with good talent, with true confidence and true ability, that's how you build an infrastructure that can, can sustain itself and, and continue to create quality players um, that will be able to one day hopefully go professional and, and represent the country.